Hello guys, and welcome back to another Mesozoica update. So, I know it's been a while, and I do uh, regret that quite a bit. It's been three weeks since I last uploaded, and that is way longer than I wanted it to take, but I was unable to get time to record in between then and now, uh, just because of homework and other things that I've been doing lately. But hopefully that won't be the case anymore, as those things are starting to die down with the end of the school year. So, let's get right into today's update. So to begin, if you're following Mesozoica's Facebook page, it's broken for some reason. Uh, I don't think they removed it. I think something may have happened with my link. If you have a link that does work, please send it to me so I can you know, continue to put that in the description of the video. And also, if you find a link that works, just let me know in general. Or if you know that they've actually discontinued their Facebook page to say just post on their website, which is actually what I'm going to talk about today. So this was posted four days ago now, and it is actually pretty in-depth on what they've been doing lately. Uh, a lot of the stuff that they show here isn't fully finished, but it's pretty close to being done. So let's get right into the uh, update, I guess you can say. <coughs> Sorry. So to start off, they show a map with very spread out dig sites all over the globe, so there's a very high variety of... Uh, dig sites and different dinosaurs you can get. I'm assuming that over time maybe they'll add in more dig sites and then the, I'm assuming there'll be modders who will uh, include more dig sites and all that good stuff and that's going to be really cool. Uh, also it says DNA return is not guaranteed so if you look here you see there's a timer. Now what this timer means I'm not sure. Does that mean 10 minutes? Does this mean 60 minutes? Or does it mean 60 days? Uh, in game time that's custom not even you know something like that. And then it also has a price tag. So you're probably not going to find anything in poor, but you, there's a possibility, and it takes less time. So you could spam out a lot of poor dig sites in the hopes of getting one good DNA instead of spreading uh, a whole bunch of money and possibly not getting what you want. So I don't know. What, I don't know what the benefits would be to each one. You know, you could do more of these quicker uh, than this one. I don't know if you can do multiple at one time. It doesn't really specify. But it definitely is a cool system, and it is... a I think better than JPOG because in JPOG you would have to unlock dig sites, which really didn't make any sense. If you had scientists, you could send them pretty much anywhere you wanted. You just have to buy the team and a license versus getting a level in your park. So who knows how this is going to work out. Uh, also, they remodel or at least are working on the DNA system. Uh, looks like they aren't, without giving away the true core of the DNA system, we want to showcase what the player can expect from the feature and, and better help early access users for the impending, impending alpha and beta versions. So what that means to me, that means that within the next few weeks, we're going to see an alpha. Uh, because if we if you check on the homepage, I'm not going to go there right now because we're reading through this article, but it has a progression bar of the core mechanics, and it's at 84% right now. So that's pretty far along the line. Last time I checked it, it was 74, and that was a few, a few weeks ago. It might have been a week and a half ago. So they are making progress. Uh, also, if you uh, get a certain dinosaur's DNA, it will be unlocked and it will come up with this big pop-up screen and there will be confetti and I'm guessing it will play the animation. You can go to the hatchery, view its information in the Dinopedia, uh, all that good stuff. Next, it shows a overview of the hatchery. So you can sort it based on price, its diet, its time period, and its size. And I think that's a really great thing to have if you wanted to say have a certain section of your park only one time period that allows for a lot easier of um layout of your park and then it's a very smooth layout too once you click on a dinosaur you can see all the available skins for it and overall it's just a very nice looking system i like how they have like the sort of uh pieces of dna sort of floating around the hatchery symbols they also have uh new animations which i think is really cool uh, they have a few of them on here. And notice that this one actually has what looks to be a scar or open wound on its uh, shoulder. And I think that's kind of interesting how they're implementing that in. I'm interested to see if it's actually um, part, it changes the actual skin of the dinosaur once it gets injured, or if there's just an overlay that will pop up. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the description below. Next is the modular system, which I think is really cool. I didn't realize how in-depth they were going to go with this until I actually watched this video. 
Uh, you can see that they have little spyglasses where people can look through and look at your dinosaurs, like the ones that are at actual zoos today. Uh, this right here is all custom built, and they actually have, you'll see later in the video, they have pre-built custom buildings like that are made out of these tile, block, tile blocks, but you can make your own uh, based on what I've seen so far here. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, you can uh, offset blocks so it's not locked in. Uh, you, you know, you don't get stuck into one block. You can actually move it over a little bit. So that allows you to build really cool structures. And I think it's going to, for people who really want to build nice looking structures, this is a great thing to have for uh, their visitor platforms. You can also rotate pieces, uh, move them around like that, like you just saw. That's pretty cool as well, just because it gives even more building options for the player. You can also change the color. Uh, you can see that this is a modular set. It says custom modular set. So my guess is that this means uh, you'll also be able to make your own custom modular sets and then copy them. Not 100% sure on that, but it looks like you have a copy tool that you can just use to very quickly copy and paste things all the way around, which will be very nice for when you want to uh, build something very quickly. Uh, obviously, you can set the you can rotate uh, a pre-built structure. It looks like move it around so that's actually pretty cool as well <coughs> and then also you can see here uh, just the camera tool which is actually fairly easy I mean if you watch it again they just come they just t click that and then they can take a picture pretty simple and I think it's actually very nice it'll be very good for uh, screenshots uh, unlike other games where you have to do a whole command uh, set to do it then you can see the, uh, you can see your previously created or imported compositions. So that means to me that people build massive structures and then people can download them and all that other good stuff like you saw right there, uh, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> so you also see the, uh, well, this isn't the piece of furniture, but you can also delete your designs that you have set up right here. Obviously, the dynamic weather. And then this is the biggest part right here, is that they give a what to next. So they're working on creating a large modular pieces to design and build. They're working on updating the dinosaur AI to meet their new standards, updating the visitor AI. They're finishing the animations for the dinosaurs. They're polishing the UI, which is all, all basic stuff. But then this right here, finalizing the terraforming system. This is pretty big because they were actually talking about not having this. I talked about it a few episodes ago. And I think that they finally gave an end to the fact that they need to have the terraforming system because a lot of people really wanted it. And I'm sure they'll do great with it. Um, if it's anything like their building style up here, it's going to be great. Uh, unlike JPOG where you had to base it on a scale of very fixed positions, I feel like it's going to be more open like this right here. Where you, who knows what that could mean for the, for your park or you know anything you're doing really, but... Uh, also, that they're going to have different types of terrains and biomes for you to build your park in. So that's going to be pretty cool for uh, other species other than, or other animals other than just dinosaurs. Uh, adding attraction functionalities, that's I'm sure that will be interesting. Uh, costs, uh, maybe the visitors will use them. That could in, tie in with the visitor AI. Uh, adding the visitor controller and updating the dinosaur controller. So that's all pretty cool stuff right there. Also, uh, it looks like they're doing a every Sunday weekly blog post. So from now on, you can come here, check the weekly blog post, and then, uh, or if you don't want to, you can just come watch these videos and I'll basically go over what happens. And here's their Discord, if you're interested in uh, reading it and seeing what they have to say, uh, because it is open to the public again. It was for a little while not open to the public. But that is it for today's episode, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.